Hey guys, I'm Karen. I'm a mom of two. I have a daughter who recently turned three and a son who's about to turn one. And we started preschooling at home and this is such a great program that we decided to share. So I hope you've been following along. This week, the supplies that we're going to need are white construction paper or a dry erase board, colored construction paper, washable paint, Q-tips, Fruit Loops or other colored cereal, food coloring, plastic storage bags, marshmallows, and some baking soda some vinegar, a muffin tin, eggs, and ham. The books that we're going to need for this week, um, I had a really hard time finding. Actually, I didn't find any, so I'm resorting to YouTube. I have found that there is an abundance of children's books that are on YouTube where people are reading them, but I found some really great ones, so I will try to remember to link those videos in the description below so that you can easily get to them if you don't have these books either. Freight train on Monday, mouse paint on Tuesday, green eggs and ham on Wednesday, rainbow fish on Thursday. I've mixed up my days. But those are a few of the books that we're gonna get into. The other books this week are 10 Black Dots, one of the Pete the Cat books, and Brown Bear, Brown Bear. So let's get into it. Monday, awesome day today. We started out our day learning about colors. So as I was doing last week, I had a bowl set on the table with our poem and our song, and I must say the poem for this week, it's a really silly and funny poem, so Nola really, really liked it this week. We read it so many times today and we're having fun trying to memorize it. She didn't care too much for the song, because the poem was so good and so silly, the song I guess was a little disappointing for her, but nonetheless, we've been repeating this poem many, many times throughout the day. So our first activity for the day that we did was sorting by color. Now, I had set up a little bowl with some foam letters and numbers that we have. I chose these foam letters and numbers because I had watched the short video for the freight train book the night before. The foam letters and numbers have all of the colors that are included in this book. The program specifically says that you should choose two to four colors, and I included five. Nola is very familiar with all of her colors, all of her basic colors. I mean, if you start getting into indigos and magentas, she doesn't know what you're talking about, but the basic color wheel, she understands, she knows all of her colors, she can identify them all. I picked these foam letters and numbers because they correlated with the book that we were going to read. I got some construction paper that were relatively the same colors. Um, aside from the red, it was tissue paper because apparently I'm all out of red construction paper. So her first job was to sort these uh, foam letters and numbers by color, which she did very, very easily. But what I found interesting about this when she was sorting is she first put one of each color on the pieces of construction paper and then put two of each color on the pieces of construction paper and then three on the colors of each, each construction paper. Now I wasn't expecting her to do this, but it just so happens that I picked, I made sure I had three of each color in the bowl. And I'm glad that I did because she obviously wanted to make sure that they were all equal, which I thought was great. Then we sat at the table and we read our, or we didn't read, we watched our book Freight Train, which is very simple, very basic, but uh, she really liked the video. So the sorting was our math-based activity and then our practical learning activity was to take um, some other items. So you're, you're to build a train. So I chose to use our building blocks for this activity. We have a whole train table downstairs with wooden trains. They have magnets on the end so they stick together. She is a fan of trains. So I chose to use our blocks because we, I don't think we've ever made a train out of these blocks before. So we would have to use a little bit more of our imagination because you know we obviously don't have wheels and there's nothing to hook together. They are just your basic wood blocks. What I found very interesting about the train that we made was she made sure that she made the train cars and then she made the, the freight that goes on top of it and everything matched. If it was a red car, it was red freight. And then, you know, we built the train a few times. She even started putting little roofs on top of them. And she wanted to make sure that everything was the same color. And this just, I would assume, relates back to our color sorting that we did in the morning. 
And I thought that was really good to see the two activities kind of mesh together uh, of her own action. I didn't request the suffer, just totally what she did on her own. Uh, something else I thought was worth mentioning was later in the evening when we had a bath, she has a few bath blocks in there and she was naming the colors. I noticed her naming the colors of a few things today. And like I said before, she's familiar with all of her colors. But it really stuck with her because she was pointing out colors of things later on throughout the day and that's always a great thing to see that the activity is carrying on throughout the day with her. So today we didn't spend tons of time uh, accomplishing these activities that were laid out in the program. As usual, she carried on playing them on her own throughout the day. So it was another awesome day. Tuesday, another amazing day. Today we are going to introduce the letter R and the color red. So we started the day as usual with the bowl on the table and in introducing the letter R I figured that I would collect some things from around the house that started with the letter R that she was familiar with. So I just grabbed a few things, a couple of Paw Patrol characters that start with the letter R, a little mini roller that she had, uh, a red ball we had, and the letter R from our collection of foam letters I stuck in that bowl. And I chose to write the letter R in a red crayon since we were introducing the color red as well with the letter R today you're going to talk about the letter R and give examples of certain words that make the er sound such as rainbow, roll, red. So you want to ask your child, introduce the day as red day is suggested in the program and then ask your child to identify things that they know that are red um, such as foods or maybe some toys or maybe some clothing that they have. We are to reread aloud Monday's book which was Freight Train after this, you're supposed to reread through the book for the day. And they always suggest that you do a walk through the book, a picture walk through the book first and get your child to identify what they think is happening. Uh, Nola's never really been into this. She just wants you to read it. Um, but you're to go back through the book and try to find the letter R. You don't have to do it on every page, just on a couple of pages. Try to find a couple of uppercase and a couple of lowercase so that they're familiar with this letter. So our learning activity is the alphabet hunt again. This is very similar to the letter A hunt that we did last week or two weeks ago now with the, I almost called it a torch because that's what my daughter calls it, flashlight. Uh, but this time they suggest you go through your book collection and just read the titles of the books and try to identify the letter R and make a pile of books that have the letter R in the title and that don't have the letter R in the title. We chose to just go through the books that are down here on our main floor. I didn't go into our closet where we keep the back stash of books. We just went through a few simple books um, that were readily available to us because she was noticing the letter R all throughout the day today. She was also noticing the letter A that we identified almost two weeks ago now, I think. She's still pointing the letter A out to me, even though today we were looking for R, she did both. Our easy activity, this is the math-based activity for the day, is yours to take some Fruit Loops and just put them in a pile on wherever your table, the floor, wherever you're doing this activity, and then have your child count out groups of five and lace them through yarn, string, shoelace, whatever you have on hand. We didn't have Fruit Loops, we used Cheerios because that's what we have in the house and I didn't want to waste a box of Fruit Loops. I almost went out and purchased some because I assumed it was going to be a color sorting activity with that cereal, but it's not, it's simply a lacing one. So we just used the Cheerios that we had on hand and it worked great. She loved looping, she loved eating, she made a little necklace and then ate them right off of the uh, lacing string that we had and it was a really fun activity. We read our poem many, many times today. She is still in love with this poem because like I said, again, it's pretty silly. I will at some point remember to do a screenshot of the poem and song for this week, but they are really fun and we've had uh, a great time reciting that poem throughout the week so far. She also found the letter R throughout the poem as we were reading it today, along with the letter A. So all in all today was very successful. We didn't spend a lot of time as usual doing these activities. It was a little more spread out through the day today. Uh, she didn't really circle back to any of the activities, but uh, like I said, we took a lot more time completing the activities today when usually we have them done pretty early in the morning. Uh, so that gives her a lot of time to go back to them, whereas today our schedule was a little bit off, so the activities were a little bit more spaced out, and we still enjoyed them, we still had fun, and I still felt that they were very successful today. 
Wednesday. Today we're supposed to introduce the day as Orange Day. To start this day, I had the bowl in the middle of the table as I normally do, and today I just simply put a piece of orange construction paper and a little colored die that we have from a different uh, game that we had received with one of our koala crates that involved color mixing. Um, and it's just a six-sided die that is labeled with uh, various colors. And so I left the color orange pointing up with the construction paper in the bowl in the center of the table. Then we're going to talk about things that we can identify as the color orange. Naturally, she wanted an orange after this discussion. The book that we read today was Mouse Paint. And again, I found this book on YouTube as I couldn't get a physical copy of this book. And it is all about color mixing. The program that we're following suggests that you always do a picture walkthrough of the book first and ask your child to help you predict what they think is going to happen. Noel is not really into this, she never has been, so we just went right through and let YouTube read us the book. As the picture walkthrough, I guess you could go through it on mute if you wanted to, but it uh, just doesn't really work for us. So we just went right into having YouTube read us the book. We went right into our first activity of color mixing, um, since that's what they were doing in the book. And for this, you are going to use some Ziploc baggies and squirt paint into these bags. You do one bag with red and yellow, one bag with red and blue, and one bag with blue and yellow, and just have your kid mix them together so that they see the physical results of color mixing themselves like they just read in this book. This activity wasn't as fun because I didn't put enough paint in the bags. So it was a little bit harder to mix them. We had to really pick the bags up and rub them together. And um, I'm running low on paint, so I didn't really squeeze a lot in there, but it was enough where she got the idea of how we mixed colors. The next color mixing activity is to physically get some little cups, beakers, bowls, whatever you have. Hopefully they can be clear so your child can see through instead of always having to peer over. Set this up on a tray, fill up some little containers with uh, your primary colors of red, blue, and yellow, just using some simple food coloring, and then provide some empty dishes so your child can then take the different colors and pour them and mix them together into the empty dish and see what colors they get. Now, as I mentioned, we had just recently in the past month or two gotten a koala crate and it was all about color mixing. So we already had some little beakers. She has already done an activity very, very similar to this. So she did enjoy it but she has already experienced this recently, so I just don't think it was as thrilling for her. And once we did it a couple of times in a matter of about 10, 15 minutes, she really didn't want to do it anymore for the rest of the day. But after mixing a few times, she did know which colors were going to come about from the color she had chose to mix. Purple is a rather tricky one to get. It quickly goes very dark and just appears as like a brown, but she got the idea. After we had mixed a few times, she wanted to watch the book Mouse Paint on YouTube as she was mixing the colors because she wanted to mix the same colors together that the mice were playing with and mixing together in the book, which I thought was pretty sweet. So another great day, another easy day, and, and another great day for learning about colors. Thursday. What a day this day was. Not very successful, um, but that has nothing to do with the program. We had a lot of excitement going on around the house today, mostly the fact that it was my son's first birthday and I took down his crib and put him in a floor bed first thing this morning. It was quite the day. I'm going to start off with how the format of the program goes for each day, which I should have done a few videos ago, but I didn't, so we're doing it now. It goes as such. You start the morning with your morning calendar routine, the poem and the song that is laid out for you for the week. Next, you review the topic. Today, it would have been yellow was the color we were introducing, so you would say today is a yellow day. What are your favorite things that are yellow? Something along the lines to get the conversation going. Next, you do the read aloud of the book. They suggest you do a walkthrough of the book first and see if your child can help you anticipate what's going to happen by just looking at the pictures and then go through the book again and read it. They also give you things to talk about for the day's topic. We are also introducing the letter R again today or reviewing the letter R today. So you'd go over the sound that the letter R makes, give some examples of the words that start with the letter R, recall any words you already discussed that start with the letter R, and you would have the letter written out on a piece of paper or on a whiteboard. 
Then they suggest you go back through the day's book and find the letter that you're introducing. In this case, it would be the letter R. You want to go through just a few pages and find a few uppercase and a few lowercase of the letter. Then you go on to the learning activity. Today's learning activity was to simply find things around the house that are the color yellow, since that was the color that we were introducing today. You can do this in a variety of different ways. I had planned to just give my daughter her little book bag and have her go around and collect a few things that were yellow. The second activity for the day would have been to paint a yellow circle or paint a sun. They suggest that you just paint or color if you don't have any paints, a big yellow circle, and then if your child has the skills to use scissors, perhaps cut out a couple yellow strips of construction paper and glue them on, and then hang this picture up somewhere that they can see in the house. I take it upon myself to start each day with the bowl that I've been presenting these activities or the idea of the activities. Uh, I use the bowl in the center of my table because my daughter sees that right when she comes down the stairs and that typically piques her interest and gets us right into the topics that we're going to discuss and the activities that we are going to do for the day. So today I did just that. I had simply the letter R written in yellow on white paper and then I just placed that on some yellow construction paper along with our poem and our song. We got into that a little bit. We discussed the letter, we recapped some words, we came up with some new words. Um, she wasn't into uh, reading the mouse paint book again today or watching it on YouTube as we have been doing since I haven't been able to get my hands on a physical copy of the book. She didn't really want to go around and collect any items that were yellow. She just wasn't really feeling it today and I wasn't too worried about it all. She was very excited that it was her younger brother's birthday. There was balloons hanging up when she came down and our happy birthday sign and she couldn't wait for to help him open presents and when were we going to have cake or ice cream or cupcakes or something like that as she is only three years old. So when she knows things like that are around the corner, that's all that's on her mind. So we didn't have much of a success today regarding this program, but like I said, it had nothing to do with the program itself. There was just too much other excitement going on. Coming into the Christmas season, I anticipate this a little bit more um, just because she knows that it's coming, but these activities have been super simple to follow and I'm going to see if I can bring some of these activities into the following days. Perhaps maybe even over the weekend we can do some of these activities uh, just to kind of keep the ball rolling. But for today, we didn't get much done. We talked a little bit about the color yellow and we talked a little bit about the letter R and the sounds that it makes and it pretty much well ended with that. Friday! Yay! It's Friday and we have another fantastic day lined up today. So after you do your morning calendar and poem and song routine, jump right into colors. Today we are going to have a green day, but we're not going to start off by saying that the day is green. What the program suggests you do today is give your child some hints and clues, things they would know would be green, such as grass, leaves, pears, lettuce, spinach, whatever is familiar to them that is green. You would give them those clues and then have them guess what color you are thinking of. This is a great activity and this is what we started off with today. I didn't really have a great idea for what to put in the center of the table today because I wanted our activities to uh, be in a, a different order and uh, I wanted to start off with this game to lead into the books that we were going to read today which is Green Eggs and Ham. Again we found this book on YouTube it's what we've been doing lately because that's all we can really find. Uh, there is a lot of books in this program and I so far do not have a lot of them. So we started off with this game which is a great game because we've recently started playing this game that my daughter thought of and when we are sitting at the table eating, we will take turns humming a song and then guess which song the other person is humming. So this is along those same lines and it worked out fantastically and she guessed right away and then we, I had about three turns, she just wanted to do all the guessing, but it worked. So after we played this game and the last color I did was green again, I suggested that we have a new book to watch on YouTube, which is Green Eggs and Ham. So we jumped right into that. She thought it was fantastic. We watched it probably four times. So after you read the book, you are to ask your child if they can retell and recall what happened in this book. And if you've read Green Eggs and Ham, you know that this is a great book to do an activity like that because it's very repetitive. It adds something new and then repeats all the previous and adds something new and repeats all the previous. So this is a great activity for this book. We did this. She did need some help from me. I had to uh, give, you know, help her along at recalling and retelling what happened. So our 
activity for the day was to collect some items that are green. And this is where we're going to recall some shapes. I had collected a bag of green items the day before, uh, toys, blocks, something like that, where they're um, more of a solid shape, a shape that is easy for your child to identify and that is solid in color. Again, we stuck with the green theme because that was the green day today. So I had collected these items the night before and stashed them in one of her toy little lunch bags that she plays with quite often and just left it on the desk. And this perfectly played into uh, a little while later, we were sitting at the desk and I asked her to open the item and oh, surprise, we found some green items. So we started talking about the shapes. Now this is where you will really have to know where your child is at. We are very familiar with shapes. We've done a lot of shape work. She definitely knows the basic shapes and can even get into uh, hexagon or pentagon, hexagon, octagon, diamond. We get into shapes like cylinders and cubes because we play with our blocks a lot and she's so familiar with the basic shapes, we started just to extend the knowledge when it comes to shapes. The next activity in the program was to make green eggs and ham. Wasn't happening here. She did not want to do this at all. I even suggested we make some hard boiled eggs and just let them sit in some a green water so that the shell would be colored green. She probably would like that and we, we may still do that over the weekend, but uh, she just wasn't feeling it. And we were all out of ham, quite frankly. We ate it this week. I brought it up a couple of times. She's never been interested. I'm not pushing it. We had a great day. Then we went for a walk today because it's a balmy eight degrees and sunny on December 11th. Like, when does that ever happen? So out on our walk today, a lot of what's been happening over the last few weeks came to light. There was a little bit of light construction down at the end of our street. So there were some signs and she noticed a square orange sign, her words. The next one was a hexagon sign that was the color orange. We checked out the construction, we were walking, she noted, pointed out the green grass. We've also been seeing some uh, little corn kernels scattered along the side of the road and on the sidewalk in the past couple of days, uh, assumingly so from farmers that drive up and down this road. Today she noticed the yellow corn kernels that were on the side of the road. We also discovered some more words that began with the letter R that we hadn't discussed yet, like road and run and round, although I think we already got round, but that came up in our discussion on our walk today. And I was just so thrilled with how so much uh, on the scope of what we've been doing came to light um, on our walk today. She was noticing these things. She's pointing out these things. If you've been watching any of these videos, I've been saying this a lot, that just looking at these familiar things in a new way has really stuck with her. She keeps uh, bringing it up. We go circle back to letter hunts and she's identifying letters all over the place. And now she is also noticing colors because we've been talking about colors a lot this week and we will next week too, uh, as next week's unit continues with shapes. And it's just really, really great to see that all of this stuff is really sticking with her. And you'll also notice in these videos that my one-year-old my now one-year-old, because he just turned one yesterday. He participates in a lot of these activities. There are times when he is just sitting and watching while snacking because he wouldn't be able to participate in the activities. And there's a lot of times where you see him, he had his own color mixing paint bag when we were doing the color mixing this week. He always has a torch when we're on an alphabet hunt. And there are a lot of things I do go back to with him after Nola has done. And I, you know, I just don't, I don't always run out and grab the camera for that because this program mainly circles around my three-year-old, but always, always include other siblings, no matter what their age, whenever you can, because we all just want to be included, right? If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're thinking about following along and perhaps starting some homeschooling with your preschooler, then consider subscribing. Thanks.